Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and in this video I'm going to fit a proper water chiller to my large CO2 laser machine. I'll also briefly cover some of the control systems on this chiller unit and some options for keeping the water system from freezing over the cold winter months. Let's get to it. During this video, you're going to see that I have my chiller unit sitting on top of the laser machine. This is just for presentation purposes so that we have a better view of the chiller unit. Just know that during a normal installation, I would have my chiller sitting on the floor next to the laser machine in the corner of the laser machine where I have all of the water ports. I'm going to start by saying that most of these import CO2 laser machines, including this Monport machine, are going to include a bucket for water and a pond pump. We're going to keep this pump for the pond outside and straight away we're going to set the machine up with this active chiller, a CW5200. The first thing I'm going to do is connect the water lines between the laser machine and the water chiller. And to keep things very straightforward and simple, I'm always going to go from the output of the laser machine to the input of the chiller and from the output of the chiller to the input of the laser machine. I'm always going to go from an output to an input. That keeps it pretty simple. And to help clarify, if you have any questions, we're gonna take a look at the back of the chiller unit and the laser machine to see exactly what I'm talking about. On my laser machine, the output is actually labeled outlet. We're gonna follow this water line. It's going to go all the way up and it's going to go to the inlet of the chiller unit. And from the outlet, of the chiller unit. We're going to follow this line. I've got it off to the side so we keep them separated. And that outlet goes to the inlet of the laser machine. I'll keep the hoses in place with some hose clamps. I tighten these down just so that the clamp starts to bite into the hose. The chiller is now ready for water. I use distilled water only and not tap water purified water or filtered water. Those other waters don't last as long and in the worst case scenario may actually damage the laser tube. My setup with the CW5200 series chiller and my 130 watt laser tube on this machine is going to take about two gallons of water. We'll check out the back of the chiller unit and see that there's a water fill gauge. I like to extend the life in my chiller system by adding a cap full of some fish tank LJ control. Next, I'm ready to power the chiller on for the very first time. And when I plug the chiller in, I recommend if it's possible to plug the chiller in on its very own circuit separate from the laser machine. See, when the chiller kicks in, it sends out a little bit of a power surge and it has been known to affect the laser output. Once I've got power on the machine, there's going to be two things that I wanna check for. The first one being is the water gauge on the back of the chiller unit that we just saw. When the chiller turns on, it's gonna start filling water up in the laser tube. It doesn't take a whole lot, but I wanna make sure that my water level stays in the green zone. Now the other thing that I wanna check for is water leaks within the system and that's anywhere there's a connection between the machine and the water chiller. So this is going to include, of course, the connections that we made earlier on the back of the chiller, the back of the laser machine, but don't forget about the water connections on the laser tube and inside a cabinet, typically in the corner where the water tubes go up to the laser machine, there's going to be a flow or pressure switch and there's a lot of water connections in there and we wanna check those out as well. I recommend watching for water leaks for at least five to 10 minutes. I have the water chiller already running and that's because when I power this unit on, 
it goes through a series of self checks. And once it's complete, this lets out a really loud beep. And I know many of you watch these videos with headphones on and I didn't want to blow your eardrums out. Now with this unit running, I have been monitoring the gauge in the back and the water level has stabilized. And I also did an initial check for any water leaks around the system. Everything looks good and I'll continue to monitor that for again about the next 10 minutes. While we wait for that, I think this would be a great opportunity to go over how this unit controls the temperature of the water and there's also an alarm output on the back of the unit. I'll talk a little bit about that. But moving back towards the front of the unit, we're going to see that it displays the water temperatures in degrees of Celsius. Now by default, a CW5200 series water chiller is going to power up in what we call intelligent mode. This water chiller has two sensors in it. It's going to measure the air temperature and the, uh, the humidity in the air, and it's going to very conservatively calculate the dew point or the water temperature at which condensation will start to form on the water lines and the laser tube. And condensation on the laser tube is one of the leading causes of laser tube and laser tube power supply failure. So running it in intelligent mode is a great way to make sure that we don't get any condensation on those components. Now, because it's checking the humidity, as the humidity rises in the work area, that means it may allow the water temperature to start getting warmer than what we would like to see. If I see that my chiller unit is starting to approach 30 degrees C, that means the humidity in the room is too high for this to want to turn on and it doesn't want to risk getting any condensation on the laser tube. With too much humidity in the air, I simply turn on the AC in the, the studio here and in one to two minutes, the humidity has gone down enough that the chiller kicks in and it gets back into that comfortable zone that I like to see on the front display. For most people, I recommend keeping the chiller unit in intelligent mode. I think it's a really great mode, especially if you have climate control within your shop, such as uh, a dehumidifier or an air conditioner. If you don't have that, you may want to take the chiller unit out of intelligent mode and put it in manual control. Just know that you're going to have to really keep a watchful eye and make sure that you don't get any condensation on your laser tube. Next, I'd like to turn our attention to the back of the chiller unit again for the alarm output. On the back of the chiller unit again is the alarm outlet. I like to call it the alarm output. This is going to uh, send a signal out if the water chiller temperature gets too warm or if the pump stops working. This can get wired directly into the controller on the laser machine, but we'll save that for a different video. So far, everything looks great and next, I want to talk about those of us who live in cold weather climates and run the risk of the water freezing inside of the chiller unit or even worse yet, freezing inside of the laser tube causing it to crack and break. For this, there's going to be several different options including a laser chiller coolant with a built-in additive that's kind of like an antifreeze. I've also read that some people are using the pink RV antifreeze and my personal favorite and what I recommend is an inline water heater such as the Afterburner by Light Object. The inline water heater is only going to actively heat when the pump from the chiller is running. So both those systems need to be running at the same time. This means on the inline water heater, I need to make sure that my temperature set points are low enough that it doesn't activate the chiller to kick in to actively cool. I don't want these two systems to get in a fight with one another. The only winner there is going to be the power company when they send me the electric bill. This covers the initial connection and setup of the chiller unit. 
Join me in the next video where I power up this huge Monport machine. I'll be going through some power checks. I'll be getting motion on the machine. And I'll even be going through some of the features and use of the Ruida controller. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help the Laser Channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.